All right. Good evening. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Monday night, 11, 17 p.m. That's California time here. Still Monday. 616, uh, 616, June 16, 2025 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 1.7 up into Alaska. Uh, Going to jump in here to the Cascadia subduction zone first, where we got a pretty decent uptick here of trimmer activity occurring down into the subduction zone of the Cascadia, roughly about uh, 35, 45 kilometers deep or so underneath this region. If you watch my last uh, video from last night, uh, you'll you'll see, and actually this morning as well, that I noted specifically to watch this area for elevated trimmer uptick because, strictly because, of activity out here across the Blanco Fracture Zone and the strike slip boundary, right? And most of the time when earthquake activity happens out here, the pressure increases down here across this region of the southern end of the Cascadia. Now, that tremor activity is really, if you look at it here on the map, just due to the southeast of that earthquake activity. And that makes sense. That's where the strain would be uh, accumulating following, er, following earthquake activity out here along the Blanco Fracture Zone. And that's a decent number. 178 epicenters. No earthquake activity out there, but this is further you know, proof here that earthquakes in this region do strain this area to the southeast pushing uh, the Gorda plate here, part of the Juan de Fuca plate, further underneath this region of the North American plate. No big earthquake activity, but the relationship here between the earthquake activity here just yesterday and the tremor activity today, uh, that well, that's one in the same there. I mean, that's uh, mo most definitely proof right there of the activity occurring underneath this region right now. Uh, one earthquake up at the uh, Cascadia, although this is somewhat deep here, about 19 miles deep here into the uh, center portion of the Cascadia. Again, no big earthquake activity to note out there. Northern California has seen an increase as well. A couple earthquakes here in the two range. Uh, up into Washington, uh, outside of Mount St. Helens to the north here, uh, a couple crustal quakes being recorded out there in the two range, uh, but uh, nothing big going on out there for now. Uh, the Bay Area, a couple earthquakes from earlier. The latest quake here on the, uh, just off the Rogers Creek Fault, looks like northern end, the 1.4. Uh, further down south here, along the San Andreas Fault, a couple earthquakes there in the uh, microquake range, just north here along the creeping section. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, Southern California, I want to bring up the terrain map so we can see this a little bit better. Uh, nothing above 2.5. All small microquake activity. And uh, just generally light. Most of this movement occurring on the San Jacinto Fault Zone. That's a very active fault system there that uh, it's always seen earthquake activity on any given day. In fact, if you look here in the last 30 days, that's just that's a cluster of earthquake activity. Secondary here to the San Andreas Fault. So this does accumulate some strain. Uh, but eventually that builds up here across the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, and that's where, you know, the strain has been building for over 300 years uh, for that southern branch. Uh, up north here in Montana, a couple smaller earthquakes here around Finley Point, nothing big. Uh, Yellowstone National Park down here, northwestern Wyoming. Let's see what we got here tonight. See if there's anything going on. In the last 24 hours, rel relatively quiet conditions here. There were some thunderstorms out there making noise in the afternoon earlier today. But uh, things are quiet out there. Really no earthquake activity to note there across Yellowstone National Park. Oil fields have been rock and rolling out there. And the, uh, the liquid gold, I should say black liquid gold out here. Just uh, outside of Midland and outside of Pecos, Texas there. Quite a few uh, oil fields out there listed on the map. And, uh, well, that's nothing new. Eastern portion of the country, pretty quiet there. Not a whole lot of earthquake activity stirring up for now. 5.0, uh, very shallow earthquake here around Ecuador. Outside the region here of, uh, I think that's, uh, Quito. If I did not pronounce that correctly, please, uh, let me know. I'm open to, uh, 
uh, correction. That's uh, about 60 miles south here of, it look, of the area, it looks like. But a uh, very shallow earthquake here along the mountain range earlier this evening for that five-pointer. Um, one earthquake way up in northern Alaska again, it looks like. A little 3.3. Been quite active up there recently. Uh, of course, Alaska builds up a lot of strain here across the Perchilli Trench. Or the uh, Aleutian Trench, excuse me. I would hope that the Perchilli Trench did not go that far up north. Maybe in a, who knows how many millions of years. But uh, yeah, along the Aleutian Trench here, you got quite a bit of activity stirring up. Some threes and the more recent 1.7 here right now. So things have been quite active across this area of the subduction zone. Watch that closely. Uh, the Kuril Kamchatka Trench here, some fours stirring up. Also some deeper activity here across the southern end of the Japan Trench. Leaving the Nankai Trough here, absent of earthquake activity, but I uh, guarantee you it's building up. Four-pointer, fairly recent there across South Island. At, uh, let's see what we got. Let's go over here to the GeoNet servers and see what we have here real quick. Uh, they're actually listing that as a 4.2 about three hours ago. Local time there. They're in Tuesday time period already. Uh, it's already afternoon. Goodness, I mean, it's crazy. Probably early evening right now. Um, southern end here of the Alpine Fault for a 4.2. It's been a little bit active down there across the southern end recently. But in general, this area, South Island there across the western area is primed for some big earthquake activity. Uh, the Alpine Fault is uh, one that can produce it. But we've got a four-pointer there at Southern Inn right now. Some deeper activity up north. Uh, aside from that, you got the typical clustering going on here. This is nothing new. I'm t I repeat that on I every video because I get quite a few questions asking me, why is there so many earthquakes out there around Indonesia and the Philippines? Well, you know, this map right here. Is a prime example of why there's so many earthquakes. Look at all the directional arrows here, the plates. If this was California, we'd be looking at large earthquakes every day. But we got arrows pointing away from us, some pointing towards us. It just takes hundreds of years for large earthquakes to strike out here. Out here in the Indonesia area, Philippines, all the arrows are pointing towards each other. It just takes weeks, sometimes months of buildup to produce large earthquakes. That's, that's just how it is. That's the way the plates work out here. But they're always seeing earthquake activity out there. Uh, nor north of uh, Iceland there, 4.1 along the plate boundary. The Mediterranean, nothing going on there for earthquake activity. All right. Um, Hawaii, let's give a quick glance here at Hawaii, see what we have going on for the uh, Kilauea volcano real quick. Uh, waiting on episode number 26. These guys here at the uh, USGS are thinking that the uh, episode there, 26, will begin between. They're actually giving gate, uh, dates right here, June 18th and the 20th, based on current rates of summit inflation. Interesting. But uh, it makes sense here because this is almost predictable when it comes to uh, predicting the next eruption, unless something happens down below. But, yeah, they're... Uh, Thinking here in about two days or so, yeah, probably two to three days is a likely um, time frame before we see another eruption here. We're not quite at the level observed in previous eruptions there at Kilauea Volcano, but we're getting close. No change. This is just a rinse and repeat cycle there since December. Episode 26 is close here within a couple days. All right, space weather activity. Um, well, looking like another C flare, maybe almost an M flare right now from, uh, it almost looks like there's an active region out here on the Eastern limb starting to crest into view. Uh, notice the sunspot stirring up here. I, I don't think it's 4114. It's not flaring there on the UV image, but that's behind a little bit in terms of the update. Uh, but it is stirring up here into the M flare category. We got a decent chance here for some uh, flaring activity. 30% chance for X flare, M flare, 75% chance. Proton event, 65% chance there. So things are elevated with respect to the solar flares. Nothing, though, 
in the forecast for solar storms in terms of CMEs and auroras for now. Uh, but we got to watch 4114. It looks like it's almost joining a sp sunspot out here further to the eastern limb or the eastern uh, section of the sun. But there's quite a bit of peppered areas there of deep, darker colors. That uh, is an area to watch. It's directly facing Earth right now. So anything that does blast off from, from it will be certainly Earth-directed. Um, but let's see what we got out there on the far side, the eastern side of the sun, because things are uh, active out there. I believe it's this sunspot right here. This is a uh, 16th UTC time, but we're already into the 17th UTC time. So this is technically 24, about 30 hours behind. So the area of interest is going to be right here. This is actually a newer sunspot because this was not out here um, in the last couple runs of the uh, far side of the sun. So this is growing. It is producing, um, you know, some flaring and it's actually flaring well above the surface area of the sun that uh, you know some sea flare activity stirring up I don't think we well M flare it looks like we did peek out into the M flare uh, I am seeing it on the M flare it looks like maybe a C 9.9 these guys are showing uh, maximum at C 9.9 .9, so maybe not quite the M flare category but it looks awfully close <laughs> So uh, that's another active area coming into the earth direct, uh, into the view of the earth directed uh, earth earth facing side of the sun, I should say. Uh, this massive coronal hole is a big nothing burger, nothing going on. This is all high speed solar wind stream that's pointing south over the Earth Sun plane. I know a lot of folks making a big deal out of it, but uh, there's really it's not anything big. It's just a a coronal hole there on the sun, and uh, it's in a wrong direction to do anything here to Earth well south of the earth sun plane <clears throat> obviously if this was centered more we'd be talking about days and lots of nights here of a potential roar activity but that's not happening um big time tornado activity up in nebraska today i've seen some huge tornadoes and they only had a five percent chance of tornado activity so uh pretty incredible there uh, but there is some uh, potential for some storms out there in Nebraska areas northward and south into Kansas uh, for some wind and some big-time hail threats out there. But, uh, yeah, storm reports, a uh, decent-sized tornado out in Nebraska today. Uh, I've seen that all over uh, social media. 17 reports, though, of uh, some tornado activity. Near, uh, I believe it was uh, Lincoln, Nebraska area, near Dickens, I think. That, that's where that bigger uh, tornado kind of hit out there. So a lot of tornado uh, potential or tornado activity in Minnesota as well. But the Nebraska tornado is very photogenic. I mean, one of those huge tubes coming out of the sky, big time tornado. Um, and quite a few storm chasers out there caught that today. Incredible video. Check it out there on the on your social media outlets. Nothing coming into the Gulf. Maybe, uh, although it looks like something, some tropical moisture coming in here towards the end of June, but that's a ways out. Uh, we are getting close to hurricane season here. I mean, we're entering into it, not peak season, but we're getting into the time where we could see uh, things stir up out there in the tropics. Right now, the only uh, potential disturbance is going to be Tropical Depression 5. Uh, but that's about it. I mean, the Atlantic pretty quiet, uh, Central Pacific quiet, nothing major going on out there across the area uh, for, as far as the rest of the areas go. <clears throat> All right, uh, Southern California, just a real quick glance here. Uh, nothing, I mean, just got a lot of earthquake activity, little small quakes around the region here. Watch the southern end of the Cascadia. Earthquake activity ramping up here, leading to excessive, well, not excessive, but elevated tremor down across the southern end. So we know that earthquake activity, when it strikes up here, is further straining this area down south. It's a strike slip boundary, so that makes sense. That's why the, uh, that's why this tremor activity occurred here throughout the day today, because of the earthquakes back here across this 
Blanco fracture zone. Just do right there. I mean, it's directly in the zone there where I would expect trimmer to uptick. That means that pressure is increasing across the locked area, across the uh, southern end of the Cascadia. All right, folks, I'm out of here. Um, it was tomorrow, Tuesday. It is Tuesday. I'm uh, way past my bedtime here, so I was just up here watching a movie with Missy Mimi's and uh, wanted to get an update in here before bedtime, so we're going to call it a night. Have yourself a wonderful evening out there, and we will catch you guys out here for the Tuesday morning update, folks. Stay safe and uh, have a wonderful evening. Tuesday morning update. That's right.